Nathan Donnelly here with Crop King, and today we're going to go through and be transplanting our tomato plants for this upcoming year. So last week we went through and we filled all of the buckets with the perlite, and I've had the irrigation in here running since Friday. To A, go through and make sure that everything's running the way that it's supposed to, and so therefore if I had a solenoid that was going to fail or a line that was going to go through and plug up, I'd know that before I had tomato plants in here. Um, and the other thing too is to go through and make sure that we've got that whole meteor profile moist, so when we go through and transplant plants into here that they're going to go through and have all the moisture that they need to go through and get their initial roots started. When we go through and plant, we're going to go through and do two plants per bucket. And then we go through and we've got our top covers already on top of the bucket so that, that gives us an indication where our plants need to go. And when we start these plants out, we'll take our irrigation stake and it'll go directly into the rock wool to go through and make sure that that rock wool stays moist until those roots have an opportunity to go through and root out into the perlite. And so then about days 10 or 14 is when we'll come back through and move those irrigation stakes back out away from the plants into the holes in the top covers where they're supposed to be. So here we've got half of our top covers. So this goes through and shows us where our plants are gonna go. So we make our little dibbles here. We'd go through, transplant the plant into there. Then we've got our other half of our top cover that goes through and sits in the bucket. And then our plants would be here. So we would take our two irrigation stakes and that would go directly into the rock wall. So again, these would go through and stay here for the first 10 to 14 days. And then after the plants rooted out, we'd go through and we move these stakes into here where they'd go through and stay for the duration of the time that we have the crop in the greenhouse. So typically when we go through and we transplant the tomatoes, they're gonna go through and be in their full sheet, 98 counts, one and a half inch by one and a half inch cubes. But due to needing to get the greenhouse cleaned up and some different things fixed, we knew that we were gonna go through and have these plants basically a week late transplanting them. So what we did is we went through and we moved them up into these Grow Smart trays. So it's a rigid plastic tray that goes through and has 78 holes. And then I went through and we spaced them out into every other hole to go through and basically end up with 39 plants in that same 10 by 20 footprint, just to go through and give these plants a little bit of additional space so they didn't become overcrowded, end up shading the growing points and causing them to stretch. If you knew you were gonna be late and it was gonna go through and be two or three weeks before you were gonna go through and get those transplanted, you can go through and shift up into the three by three grow cube. So basically what this does is you take that plant and you go through and you stick it into this hole here, make sure this cube is wet. It'll go through and root out into this cube, giving you a couple more weeks of growth before you need to go through and get that plant transplanted into the bucket. So a grower might decide that they want to go into these blocks if they know that the weather's coming in and it's going to be, you know, highs of five degrees and they don't want to go through and heat a five, 10,000 square foot greenhouse to go through and take care of plants that are this size to go through and occupy that space to go through and buy them a couple more weeks, wait for a little bit warmer weather. They can go through and heat a smaller space, but give those plants enough space that they need to go through so they don't go through and stretch.